Hey, welcome to Half the Battle. Today, we're going back to the comic and we'll be taking a look at issue 64, Maneuvering for Position. Look, this issue has a lot crammed into it, as was the style at the time, and it likes to jump between storylines, so we'll be taking them on one at a time. First though, there's the cover. It shows the Baroness, Serpentor and Cobra Commander looking angrily at each other. The term Cobra Commander needs a huge asterisk here, but we'll get to that. The opening page has Cobra Mambas attacking a fishing boat that's approaching Cobra Island. On it is Fred, who last issue hired a boat to get him out there. Uh, speaking of last issue, if you're expecting us to check in with the Joes imprisoned in the Barovian work camp, yeah, they don't get a single panel in this comic. They'll have to wait till next time. Anyway, Fred leaves the captain of the boat to get blown up but good as he escapes in the... Uh, pogo. The bloody thing even manages to take out a mamba! Poor pilot, that's a really, really undignified way to die. Almost as undignified as getting shot down by your own troops because Serpentor says screw it and doesn't care if he hits the second mamba while shooting at the pogo. DNA of the greatest military minds in history, folks. The Joes don't even need to be there for Cobra to lose. It's only then that they realize that the thing has Cobra markings. He's allowed to land, though I don't think they had much of a choice in the matter, and Fred steps out, proudly declaring he's Cobra Commander. It's bold, I'll give him that. This is where the comic switches to a different story, but we're sticking with this one. That does mean I'm creating a glaring time skip, as Fred has been answering questions for hours, still not convincing Serpentor. Thanks to goading from the Dreadnoughts, the troops therefore demand trial by combat. Now, Serpy is a tough guy, but the other dude is wearing battle armor. So I wouldn't be too keen here. Before fisticuffs can ensue, the Baroness arrives back on Cobra Island and happens to be the only one who knows what the commander actually looks like. Well, except for Billy, but he isn't there. Or Destro, who also isn't there. Convenient that, isn't it? And I just realized the uh, Baroness is coming back because of something that happened in the Special mission series. Yeah, I really should have reviewed that issue first. Eh, I'll get to it later. Anyway, they all agreed to put both of them in the helicopter so only she will see his face. And I hope he built that toilet into that suit, otherwise it's gonna need a cleaning. After hesitating for a moment, Fred resigns himself to the situation, so he disarms and removes his helmet. And ladies, if a man ever looks at you like that... You know you've got him by the balls! He explains who the hell he is, and that the commander found his crippled son Billy, and decided to dedicate his life to him. Now, the comic calls this a blatant lie... But no, that's what the commander was actually gonna do! Fred just forgets to mention, probably because it's such a minute detail, that he uh, shot him in the back and took his place. Sensing a unique opportunity, the Baroness doesn't rat him out, instead appointing herself his silent partner and declaring the true Cobra Commander has returned. I'm sure nothing but good things will happen to her because of that. Nothing but good things. And that wraps up this part of the comic. Time for the rest! In Utah, at the pit, we're introduced to some new Joes. Though we have already met several of them way back in issue 60. Fast Raw, Falcon, Law and Chuckles are now officially Joes. As are Psych Out and Backstop. The last one, given all the dignity the comic feels a vehicle driver deserves by only showing a shadow and the top of his head. This is also one of the few times Crank A shows up in the comic. They are greeted warmly by Letterneck, who asks if they have clearance for you-know-what. Their paperwork hasn't caught up with them yet, so they should be kept in the dark. Psych Out basically calls him a dumb bureaucrat as the barracks start to rumble. Letterneck refuses to explain... Even though they could just, you know, walk outside to see what's going on. While they remain in the dark, we the readers know what's up as Hardtop and Payload walk in. Meaning that the thing being hinted at is none other than the freaking Defiant Complex? Also, Payload is black for some reason, even though the figure isn't. Later that night, Chuckles ropes Psych out into a midnight stroll to find out what's going on, but all they find is giant tracks, no vehicle. They head back, but find all the lights on. Was their absence discovered? 
Well, no, it's just the barracks are all of a sudden filled with Joes who all look like they came from underground. It's actually kinda fun to figure out who's who. One guy is kinda confusing, as uh, I think he's probably supposed to be out back, but he's not wearing just a t-shirt, so he looks more like Snowjob, who's in that Barovian camp. Speaking of that situation... While we don't visit the location, the story does progress as we head to Marseille, France to check in with Snake Eyes, Scarlet and the Blind Master, who don't look nearly as blown up as they're supposed to be. Yeah, nobody bought they actually stepped on a mine last issue. They are on their way to Barovia, but since Snake Eyes can't go to the freaking bathroom without being attacked by ninjas or something, the local crime enthusiasts mistake them for diamond smugglers for some reason and plan to rob them. Possibly though, Snake Eyes ends up doing nothing for once. Yeah, it's the blind master who takes out their attackers in what I can only describe as a great action scene. Though it does have the crash through a fruit stand cliché. He looks like he's getting blown up, but we know that sort of thing doesn't faze him, so he'll meet up with them later. This is a fun little interlude, but honestly, it wasn't really necessary as part of this comic. And that was issue 64, Maneuvering for Position. A pretty great issue that had a lot, and I do mean a lot, going on. Maybe even a little too much. Look, I said I liked the Marseille stuff, but this part right here, where Fred says he's been answering questions for hours... I would have liked to have seen a page or two about that! Serpentor trying to trip him up with questions that would have told us, the reader, a lot about the inner workings of Cobra and their day-to-day -day operations. It would have been fascinating and feels like a real wasted opportunity here. Overall though, yeah, great issue! Cobra gets shaken up, and the promise of the Defiant showing up is looming large, so there's a lot to look forward to. Well, I'll see you next time everybody, and hey, why not like, share and subscribe if that's your thing?